One of the goals we made all the way a year ago was to attempt to get every single achievement in Halo the Master Chief Collection before the release of Halo Infinite. And we've been tracking our journey for quite some time on this channel, looking into those lasso achievements and the last set of achievements we had left. And as you guys know, by the time our Halo 3 lasso video released, we only had a small window of time to get the last set of achievements we needed. So with just a couple of days left, we decided to hit it hard and try to get those those final achievements done before Halo Infinite's release, and it got very close and down to the wire. But before we get into those final moments leading up to Halo Infinite's release, we wanted to go back first and look at the very beginning of our journey to try to get every Halo achievement. the Master Chief Collection officially releases, and I started playing Halo 2 Anniversary because that was the big deal about this collection, and I got my very first achievements, Cairo Station, Standard Operating Procedure, and Your Journey Begins, which these are for playing the first level of the campaign, playing a level co-op, and then, of course, just playing a campaign mission or a match of multiplayer. These are the good old days where there were a lot of easy freebie achievements very early on. Little did I know what we would actually eventually eventually be getting into. Also in that first level, I did get the legendary, the Chips Dubbo achievement, which was just interesting because I had no idea what that achievement even was back then. Also in that first night of the MCC releasing, I got Just Getting Started for killing 100 enemies or players, just from campaign, and also Balhalo's Most Wanted for killing 100 grunts. The following day, I actually did manage to complete 10 missions of multiplayer or games, which was probably a mix of me playing campaign and then maybe Maybe occasionally getting into a multiplayer match because multiplayer just straight up didn't work when MCC released. And throughout the following days, I picked up various campaign achievements playing through Halo 2 Anniversary. I remember multiplayer being really rough, but somehow I did manage to get the secret music cue, the Siege of Ivory Tower, which is surprising because I actually had no idea how I got that one because I definitely didn't know that was an Easter egg until years later after I met Luke, after we started Rocket Sloth, and we were looking into Easter eggs. But after MCC's release, the following days, I played through Halo 2, played some multiplayer, and a little bit of Halo 3 as well, and oddly enough, on the 15th, I got a pretty challenging achievement. This is my rifle, this is my gun, which is where you have to play Forerunner on Halo 4 on Heroic or Harder while carrying a UNSC weapon till the end. I think there was like an avatar or something I wanted to unlock in the game tied to this, so that's probably why I actually ran it. With the state of MCC, after I picked up some various achievements, more or less unintentionally or without actually going for them, kind of took a break from Halo for a bit. Though I did make a return midway through 2015 and picked up a few achievements like Grunt Ageddon, finally getting the first of the a thousand kill this type of enemy achievements. And also I did pick up Foehammer for killing 5,000 enemies or players. So around the end of 2015 and into 2016, I actually was starting to get into PC gaming more, so I barely really played on my Xbox. But I still would get on occasionally to play some multiplayer, and I think I had just finished moving into a new apartment with my then girlfriend, now wife Sandy, and I was testing out the Xbox on our TV, and I ended up getting the a long time ago achievement for playing a game of Halo 4 on the 4th of any month. This was just a random check-in, and I don't think I played too much Halo after this for quite some time. And for the most part, my achievements remained dormant in the MCC for a little while. In 2017, I still was being a PC gamer. And after all of that, this is where Luke and I became friends. We started playing games like PUBG, Roblox, and Rainbow Six Siege. And we actually started Rocket Sloth not too much longer after that, which was just a gaming channel focused on literally any type of gaming content. Though some of our earliest content was about Halo and Halo Reach, for example, and how we wish they would one day add that to the MCC because it wasn't quite running the best on the 360 emulation on Xbox One. But we did talk about Halo in our earlier days, but there definitely was a ton of other type of content on Rocket Sloth back then.
So after this gap of not playing Halo for a long time, I actually realized that Sandy had never experienced Halo before, and in general back then she wasn't big on gaming. Things have definitely changed now. So we sat down, booted up Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, and we did a playthrough on Easy Difficulty, which was the first game she ever beat, and along the way I picked up a ton of Combat Evolved achievements along the way. I got Zombie Repeller for killing 1000 Flood. Also, I got Were It So Easy for killing 1000 Elites when we then moved on to our playthrough of Halo 2 Anniversary. Now at this point, I still mostly was a PC gamer, and around this time, I realized that the Xbox Companion app on PC would let me stream my Xbox to my PC. So all I had to do was actually just plug the Xbox in, and I could still sit at my desk with my cool gaming setup and whatnot. So because of this, I started, obviously, decided to play more Halo more regularly because I can actually just easily play it at where I normally played video games. Remember, this is all the way back in the prehistoric days before the Master Chief Collection came to PC. And I will say, this this led me into this stint where I started to get really addicted to picking up achievements on the Xbox. And with just the massive number that are available in MCC, it just seemed like an easy go-to place to just pick up achievements on the Xbox. So I started going after some easy Easter egg achievements. There were some challenging ones too, and some cool ones as well. I got the secret grunt achievement from Halo 3. I went and picked up all of the skulls on the Halo 3 mythic maps. I did part-times on all of Halo 3, and then I went on to do Halo 3 ODST as well. Then I went back to do the par scores for Halo 3, and I think that month I got the most gamer score on my Xbox account that I'd ever gotten in years, just running around looking for some cool achievements. Midway through that month, I ended up going and getting every single audio log in ODST twice because I didn't realize you had to play through the campaign to get the last audio log, so I ended up having to restart the whole process because I'm an idiot. And I even went for some harder achievements like Classic, where you have to beat a level solo legendary with no shots fired or grenades thrown. By the end of the month, I was going absolutely crazy, just trying to pick up every achievement left and right. I did legendary playthroughs of Halo Halo 3, I was going after Halo 2 collectibles, I ended up setting up the Xbox in the other room so I could play at night after getting work done for the day. This was actually around the time where we did the hardest Halo achievements video on our channel, which probably marked the biggest turn into covering Halo more heavily on our fledgling YouTube channel, and it also marked the beginning of us really going hard into Halo and getting invested into making Halo content on YouTube. Also interesting side note, our very next video after the hardest Halo achievements was best elevators of all time in Halo. So you guys can't say we're running out of ideas when we never had them to begin with. Still, it's an underrated video on our channel. So with my love of Halo growing once again, and I was just really getting invested into it, I started spending more time playing Halo and less time on the computer playing computer games. And eventually, I convinced Luke the reason I wasn't hanging out with him as much wasn't because of him, but it was because of Halo. Yeah, sorry, Luke. I also managed to convince him to dust off his old Xbox and decided to join me on some Halo which was really fun because Luke mostly only played Halo at his friends' houses when he was younger, but never really owned or kept up with the entire franchise. So we had a lot of fun going into cool little things about Halo, and we also got to make content based off of the things that we were diving into, and we tried to tie Halo topics into a unique storytelling format. We then started going after some more interesting achievements like Peanut Butter and Chocolate, which is completing a Halo 2 level on Heroic with the Master Master Blaster Skull Enabled. By June, we managed to go through and find every single skull in Halo, just front to back, and we put out our Hardest Skulls video on our channel. And during this time, we had a lot of fun just going through and picking up all the achievements related to secret hidden developer Easter eggs throughout Halo games. And by August, as an excuse just to play through Halo 3 again, I pitched the idea of doing Halo 3 without shooting, and Luke thought it would be even more fun if we just did the original trilogy, so we decided to do that and document our adventures and experience in a video. Also shortly after that, we did one of our favorite videos of all time where we tried and failed to do the Halo 3 Warthog run without a vehicle. And while these weren't achievements, they were in the spirit of them making doing these types of videos moving forward a lot of fun to do.
A few weeks after Halo Reach was added to MCC and released onto the PC, I still was on the grind for picking up a lot of the easier achievements. Randomly, I was bored one night and I joined an LFG group playing through Reach and getting legendary data pads. And now this group was wild. There was this one guy who was calling the special elite on the tip of the spear Napoleon for some reason. I don't know why. And after that level ended, this guy ended up just randomly leaving. So the game host invited a new player who joined and helped us finish up our playthrough. And and after we finished playing through Halo Reach, we got to talking about achievements and comparing how far we had completed Halo, the Master Chief Collection so far. And turned out this guy only had like 10 achievements left, which I thought was absolutely insane that anyone could even get that close. But one of the achievements that he needed was getting 30 Hornet kills in Halo 2 Anniversary. So we went into Forge, we made a map that we called Cheddar, so we could then cheese this achievement and we just fed each other kills for the Shook the Hornet's Nest achievement, which was pretty cool. We ended up adding each other on Xbox and a few nights later, Luke, Tails, and I decided to try to run Halo 3 Legendary under three hours. And since we had a free spot, we decided to shoot an invite to the guy. And thus, Dim joined up with us for the first time to run through and to carry us through the campaign. It was also maybe around this time when we thought that the possibility of getting most of the achievements, maybe all of them, would maybe actually be a feasible thing one day. We ended up going for the Deja Vu achievement, beating Coastal Highway 4 player legendary co-op with the Iron Skull without using a Warthog or Scorpion. And we also went for the annual achievement for doing the same thing on Halo 3's Halo, but in Ghosts, which were tied to a video we did on Vidmaster achievements. And it was shortly after that, Luke and I began the ultimate grind for the Monopolized achievement, where you have to beat the entire Halo 2 campaign under three hours on legendary difficulty. That one was really hard, but it was a lot of fun too. While there were guides out there like Halo Completionist, who still is a god with Halo, we often had to adapt new strategies for our co-op playthrough, and it was a wild experience just trying to grow from mediocre casual players to really skilled campaign players, which is required to do these speedrunning tricks. It was really satisfying when we did manage to pull it off too. It also showed us that we could do videos about just regular achievements and people would watch. It didn't just have to be crazy ideas that we came up with. People were interested in our journeys on whatever we thought was challenging or interesting to cover on Halo, that was something really cool to experience as newer Halo YouTubers. We then went through and picked up some of the under three hours speedrun and some other par score achievements. We even tried to grind out some achievements that had reputations of being stupidly hard, like the rock and coil hit back achievement, where we had to get 100 environmentalist medals in Halo 2A. By this point, we managed to get the Combat Evolved achievement for under three hours on Legendary, and we officially decided at this point that we were actually going to try to go after every achievement before Halo Infinite would come out. And yeah, we were a little in over our heads, I think. We spent so much time after that though, grinding out Halo 2 Lasso like it was the number one most important thing. Like literally every night sometimes we would be just sitting there trying levels over and over again because we needed to prove mostly to ourselves that we could complete this Lasso, which had the reputation of being the hardest achievement in all of MCC so that we could also know that maybe there was a possibility of us going after some of those other achievements that were just as daunting. It was incredibly rewarding when we actually did pull it off too. Now, during the time that we were working on Halo 2 Lasso, we actually did get help with Halo 4's Lasso Challenge, and we never actually got to make an entire video dedicated to what that run was like, so we do want to take a quick moment to recap our Halo 4 Lasso journey real quick. Fortunately, our friends Zombie343 and Jangoost were willing to help us run through Halo 4, and actually, since these guys were very familiar with Halo 4, they already knew a lot of good strategies to progress through the campaign Lasso, and they were willing to teach us a along the way. And a lot of those strategies were really useful for us when we came back to other lassos like Halo 3 and Halo 3 ODST and Reach that supported four players. Now in general, Halo 4 Lasso is known for having quite a few shortcuts that can save you time and also avoid danger. So it was nice to be paired up with some people who actually knew what they were doing. And we finished all of our Halo 4 Lasso in just about four hours. Yeah, it actually wasn't all that bad, though there were a few interesting things to note. Firstly, Promethean Knights are the worst thing ever in the bane of my existence on Lasso. They're just not fun to fight. Also, Zombie likes talking about the Dawn Skip, which is a skip on the level Dawn. Huh. 
Who would have thought? Actually, if you ever see Zombie streaming a speedrun or uploading anything onto his channel, you guys should just comment asking him to talk about the Dawn Skip. I think he'll really appreciate it. The third level, Ghost Run, is actually really hard because if one person dies, we all reset back. And that was probably the most skill-focused section in the entire run. A lot of this level is heavily scripted and it's mostly shaped around that first player, but for all four players to drive through the whole thing without dying, it's actually a lot harder than you would think. We definitely weren't very good at this and we kept dying a lot and we spent a lot of time on this section, but we did eventually clear it and despite it being hard, it was kind of fun to have this challenge to kind of aim for, especially something ghost driving related. It was just kind of cool. Another interesting part was the Mantis battle on Composer. It just wasn't necessarily too explicit, but it definitely took a lot of coordination to make sure we were taking out the right enemies to ease the amount of enemies we would have to deal with and get through this level in a relatively normal amount of time. Now, Luke and I definitely got carried through this achievement and challenge quite a bit by Zombie and Jangoose, but still, this was one of those levels that also proved to be a little bit more of a challenge. Okay, and then the last level where you're driving these giant spaceships through an on-rails mission is one of the most complicated tricks that I've ever seen in all of Halo. Essentially, because there's all these obstacles and a ton of enemies and the iron skull is enabled, if one person dies, we all get reset to the beginning. And that definitely isn't viable for a lasso. And Zombie has this crazy strategy that involves everybody glitching out of the map at a very specific point. And that part in itself was so complicated, flying and glitching out of the map without crashing and dying and then essentially we would split up where zombie would go on a very specific route triggering every single loading zone needed to progress in the level avoiding all of these death barriers that are apparently all over the place while jangoose would lead luke and i to a quote-unquote safe zone and we would fly circles in this open area in outer space until zombie finished hitting all of the loading sequences then if we managed to stay alive that long and not die or fall out of the circle or randomly just explode, which happened quite a bit, we would all get teleported to the last leg of the flying part, and then we would have to finish that normally and also not die at that part, or we would reset all the way back to the very beginning, which did happen multiple times. Then after that, we could progress the level more normally, and the rest of it wasn't all that bad. There was some trick jumping in the final section before going to fight and face off in the didact, which saved a lot of time, but otherwise, <laughs> that opening thing was one of the most common convoluted and complicated things we've experienced in a lasso run, and it was pretty awesome. Now, it was around this point, we were approaching the under 100 achievements left mark, and it wasn't too long before Halo Infinite was actually delayed, which technically gave us a fair and probably realistic amount of time to try to pull off getting all of the achievements rather than the short amount of time we thought we would be able to pull it off in. And honestly, it was probably helpful because the rest of that whole time period after that leading into the next year was extremely slow for progress. We ended up getting seriously stuck in Combat Evolve's lasso and a lot of the other achievements were multiplayer related where we had to grind for these medals or these other types of achievements that just took a long time. One of these achievements was actually glitched where you couldn't even obtain it for like over a year which was the all according to plan achievement where you have to kill the first group of enemies on Truth and Reconciliation without being detected. This achievement was just glitched for a long time. Eventually, they did patch it and we were able to go in there and get the achievement, which essentially just involved us not pushing forward and putting on the skull that gave us unlimited grenades and just throwing grenades over to the other side of the map until all the enemies died. It was one way to solve the level, but we did get the achievement and it was kind of exciting because the achievement had been glitched for so long. But in general, this was the time that we really had to put our heads down and start working on getting all of the Spartan Ops levels completed legendary solo, which was an awful experience. And we had to do a lot of multiplayer grinding.
August 23rd was a really big deal because after all of this time, I finally got all of my Spartan Ops missions done and I got six achievements at once for completing the chapter, for completing it legendary. You also get the achievements for doing it on heroic and normal. You get an achievement for doing it legendary solo. It's to this day, probably one of my least favorite achievements I've ever had to do just because it's a game mode that obviously was intended for co-op and having to struggle through it legendary solo, it wasn't the most fun. We did a whole video talking about it, but the fact that it doesn't scale enemies for being a solo party and give you a couple of less enemies definitely made this very tedious. Now, Luke also was determined to get all of the achievements as well, so during this time, he was going double time going back and picking up all of the achievements that I had gotten way early on before he had kind of started playing Halo in general. And I was also helping him out where I could, and Dim jumped on to help Luke too, so he was getting caught up really quickly. Okay, there also was this awful, awful achievement where we had to get 2,500 assist medals. Now, not all of the achievements actually have to be done in matchmaking, just a select few, and and this was one of the ones you could actually get outside of matchmaking. However, still, grinding out assist medals is not something that is very easy. Fortunately enough, Luke found some random map that was built to help you grind out assist medals, and while it never was perfect, it was a very interesting contraption that had teleporters and respawn points set up where you could feed a player into this teleportation trap, and then you could shoot a turret while another player is getting kills and hopefully if done correctly you could get assists pretty quickly. Now this process still took hours and hours for us to grind all the way to where we needed to get the achievement but at least it was a method because getting assists and saving up assist medals isn't something that you can just easily do and that's probably why they allowed you to get this achievement in something like custom games. This is around the time when Luke and I really realized that if we're gonna pull this off, we had to really start to kick some of these long achievements into high gear, and we spent a ton of time focusing in on our legendary medals, and it ultimately came down to us playing a lot of big team battle heavies on Halo Reach, and we would recruit people in our games who were doing well to party up with us and try to carry us to victory, which did help us rack up Staketaculars, which are legendary medals where you have to win the game by 20 kills to get the medal, and it would give us 1% towards our achievement every time we won. So it took a while, but we did finally end up getting that. With just 46 days left to go, we really had to start finding ways to pick up some of those achievements we'd been slacking on for a while. Luke figured out a great checkpoint for cheesing night kills, and since we needed 1,000 night kills for an achievement, which is a pretty big deal because between solo, legendary, and the 50 Spartan Ops levels, at this point we only had like 60% of the knights killed that we needed to for the achievement. So Luke found this checkpoint where if you kill one knight and revert to last checkpoint, you could just practically cheese the other three or four hundred kills we needed on knights by reverting over and over and over again. And it actually worked out pretty well and we're able to get this achievement done fast. Also during this time we'd still been on our lasso journey and had finally finished the library which was one of the hardest levels in CE lasso so we were feeling a little bit confident and we decided to finally go after the that just happened achievement where you have to complete the level on heroic without dying. We did actually really well mostly because this was a lot easier than lasso which we had just done and we actually knew where we were going because we had literally just spent hours hours in that level. So we were happy that that one was crossed off the list. And while Luke and I were chipping away at Halo Combat Evolved Lasso and getting really close, we did already begin the process of working on Halo Reach Lasso and teamed up with Dim whenever he was also online. So while obviously we uploaded the videos one after the other, we were running a Lasso level on either Combat Evolved or Reach practically every single night. But since we had already done one CE Lasso video talking about us getting stuck on Truth and Reconciliation. We thought it would make more sense for the CE Lasso video to go out before the Reach one, even though we technically beat Reach five days before we finally beat CE Lasso. I 
finally got the 250 Killjoy medals, finally. And this is where that final stretch began. We started ODST Lasso, which ended up taking us a long time because we were traveling and Halo Infinite's multiplayer randomly dropped midway into November. But we did manage to clear ODST Lasso by November 30th with just nine days to go before Halo Infinite's launch. When we finally saw like the calendar date on our phones switch over to December, I think this like panic came over us. Like we realized we had to finish up these achievements now or never because time's running out and we've set up this goal for such a long time, something we had talked about for such a long time that now we kind of realized it was do or die time for our own personal goals that we publicized all over our videos. One of the achievements that I had been most worried about, nervous about, one that we had attempted a couple of times already and couldn't make any progress on, was the 150,000 lone wolf points achievement. We tried this one multiple times and we were really struggling through it, either doing it co-op or even solo, and this was one that we just could not seem to get a good run going on. With just eight days left, we had been making good progress on Halo 3's lasso, but we were really starting to struggle with knowing that there's this other massive achievement that we just could not seem to make any progress on. We tried it, we spent hours working on it, and failed. So this one was one that we would have to revisit sometime in the next couple of days. Despite this problem, we still had other achievements we had to finish up as well. We still had playlists that we hadn't completed, so in between sessions of us covering Halo Infinite, working on our review for Halo Infinite, and just all the stuff going on with the new Halo game, and the Halo 3 lasso which we had started, Dim did step in and help both Luke and I clear some of the easier playlists that are just really time consuming. So it was nice to have someone motivated to play through the campaign and help us make progress there. So we had four days left and eight achievements that we still had to finish out. We had one final firefight, which was the 150,000 points on Halo Reach Lone Wolf. Remove the bishops from the board, which was 1,000 watcher kills, which when you do Halo 4 Legendary Solo and Spartan Ops, in total you maybe get 400 to 500 watcher kills. We had a preference for pain, which was Halo 3's lasso achievement. We had lasso master, which was just really waiting for us to finish Halo 3 Lasso before it would unlock. We had Connoisseur, which was a complete three Halo 2 playlists. I had to finish up a Monument to All Your Sins, which was complete Halo Reach Legendary Solo, which at this point I was close to finishing up. Then we still had to get Sample Plate, which is complete three cross game playlists, and Life Story, which is play the Master Chief Saga playlist. We were slowly chipping away at the Halo 3 Lasso. We we're pretty sure we'd be able to get that one done, but we still had these other achievements just kind of sitting there there that we had to work on. This day was a very busy day to say the least. Not only did we sit through and finish Halo 3 Lasso, but we also spent a ton of time running the Lone Wolf firefight over and over and over again, trying to come up with a strategy that could work. Now, we had spent a lot of time already trying to get this achievement solo, which is what everyone recommends online by playing solo, easy difficulty with all skulls on or most of the skulls on, and essentially just try to back smack the elites for about an hour until you can get 150,000 points. Now the thing was, no matter how many times we tried this, we would make progress and survive for a while, but inevitably we would just get killed by some random thing. We would get quadruple teamed by a bunch of sword elites and our back smacks just wouldn't register or something and we would die losing all of our progress, which was really discouraging when you were finally starting to acquire a decent amount of points. So we decided despite a lot of the recommendations online to go for it in a co-op way. And there were times when we tried this co-op already where it was just a mess. We would die instantly. But with how much we had practiced solo on our own trying to backsmack the elites, we were starting to get into the rhythm of it a bit well, where if we all spread out and we kind of just kept to ourselves, we would just keep training in new elites one by one, backing off when things got too crowded and try to approach them on an individual level and stay alive as long as possible. We started realizing with this strategy, we could get quite a bit of points in a very short amount of time, where with the rate we were going at, 
that if we could manage to survive, it would take maybe 35 minutes to get 150,000 points rather than the hour plus it takes if you do it solo, which was kind of the pace that we were getting when we were practicing. So we kind of just buckled down realizing that and we would reset every time one of us died early on until we could maybe survive till we had 50,000 points. And at this point, just one of us had to survive until the very end for Luke and I both to get the achievement. We had one run where we were doing really well for a while, Dim eventually got knocked off early and then Luke later on and I managed to keep going with the back smacks solo for quite a while. I made it all the way to 119,000 points which was the closest we had been but still not close enough for the achievement. So we took a little break and then we tried it again and we pushed and grinded and this time around after playing for quite some time it was up to Luke who was the last man standing and honestly when he was getting very close to the 150 50,000 point mark, there was some very, very unlucky situations that these elites kept putting him in where his shields and health were just depleting. But nonetheless, he did manage to miraculously survive, heal up, and then continue to pick off the few elites needed. And we were able to pass that 150,000 par score, knocking this achievement out the same night that we managed to do the Halo 3 lasso, which meant moving forward, we would still have two days to try to clean up those final other achievements that we had left. Afterwards, we would go on to get the Connoisseur achievement for completing three Halo 2 playlists. Luke had found another great cheesing spot for taking out the bishops, where on Halo 4, after you do this whole gondola thing, there's a checkpoint where you could use a beam rifle to quickly pick off the watchers. And then, of course, a monument to all your sins, which was Reach Legendary Solo. Seriously, this was such an incredibly wild ride even getting this far. We had one day left before Halo Infinite's release and just two achievements. We had a sample plate, which was complete three cross game playlists and life story. Play the Master Chief Saga playlist. We had worked on getting some of the cross game playlists complete. So with the Master Chief Saga playlist counting as one of those three playlists, we only had to do two other ones. So lastly, we were faced with one playlist that upon completion would unlock us our two final achievements we had left, which was the life story achievement, which was where you have to complete the Master Chief Saga playlist. This was something that Luke and I, all the way back at the beginning of us getting into Halo, started and began playing through just on and off, knowing that this would eventually culminate into an achievement. It was interesting. There's a weird issue with the playlist if you complete combat evolved that we had to be wary about. You have to beat the last level solo and then regroup for Halo 2, which we ended up doing. So after all of this, all we had to do was open up the playlist and see however far we had gotten last time we had picked up this playlist and where we had stopped off and just finish it off from there. As it turned out, Luke and I had played through all of Halo 1, 2, and 3, and then a couple of levels into Halo 4 just stopped working on the playlist. So with a few hours left, we went through and we finished one of the most fitting playlists that represented Halo for everything that it was at the time when the Master Chief Collection had come out and everything that Master Chief kind of stood for as an iconic video game character. And it was kind of a really cool way to just go out with a bang, finishing this challenge that we had worked so hard for for such a long time and actually do it in the time frame that we challenged ourselves to try to do it by. So on December 7th, while we were giving ourselves up until December 8th at 10 a.m. if we needed to, the minute Halo Infinite would drop, we did manage to get the final achievements that we needed to once and for all complete this. And with that, we could officially close the book on at least achievement hunting in the Master Chief collection, though I have a feeling Luke and I aren't done playing this game. There's still a lot of other challenges, mysteries, easter eggs, secrets, and just weird things in Halo that we always love to explore and talk about that I think will still continuously come back to the Master Chief Collection. But thank you guys so much for all of the support over, honestly, looking back, it seems like a very short time that we've been making content just focused on Halo. It's been really cool to just cover this and kind of tell our own adventures in a video form. So if you guys want to see more content like this in the future, maybe make sure you are subscribed if you feel like it. Otherwise, thank you guys all so much for watching. We'll see you guys all next time with a brand new video.